What's going on all you mentees? Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And today I'm going to be doing the overview of the final boys hardcover omnibus. This is volume 3 from Dynamite, so stay tuned. And welcome back everybody. Before getting started, I wanted to give a thank you to Vincent Faust and the folks at Dynamite for sending us copies of The Boys Omnibus. These are the hardcover editions, so I've done an overview of Volume 1 and 2, so you saw how big they were. Uh, but here we have, I love that cover by the way, this is Billy the Butcher by Derek Robertson. It's so intense, and it's right after a huge horrific thing that happens. Oh, it's one of my favorite covers. So simple, yet if you read the story, you know what this means. Uh, but this is the final volume. This is the one that wraps it up. Garth Dennis, Derek Robertson, The Boys, Hardcover Omnibus, Volume 3. On the spine here, we have the logo, uh, The Boys title there, and Volume 3. And on the back of the book, uh, the covers of the comics that are collected in here, the ISBN, and then mature rating is the important thing. Just to refresh your memory, this is what all three of the books will look like when they're on the bookshelf. And all of it complete. Only thing missing is Dear Becky, but I believe that's being released in standard size hardcover. Who knows, maybe one day we'll get an oversized hardcover of that. But here are all the spines together. Underneath the dust jacket, we have the exact same thing that Volumes 1 and 2 had. The same blood splatter down there. The boys, and then nothing on the back. I'm honestly surprised under... Or, I'm sorry, on the back here, we don't have what's collected. Now... Right here is a blurb about the boys, and here in, underneath the flap is where you're going to find the uh, contents of the book. So containing issues 48 to 72, which wraps up the series, along with the six-issue miniseries, The Boys, Butcher, Baker, Candlestick Maker, which is a rough read. Uh, but then again, it's The Boys, what isn't. So let's get this open, talk a little bit about the stories found in here, and mostly show off the artwork. But stay away from spoilers, because this is what wraps up this series. Alright, let's crack this sucker open. The white N paper that we found in Volumes 1 and 2. Hardcover Omnibus Volume 3 with the blood running down here, down this file. And we have some photos from scenes that happen here. I love this one right here. This particular scene just reminds me of something like Kingdom Come. Uh, the happier days with Butcher there. <laughs> That's how brutal this particular volume is going to be. Uh, created by Garth Ennis and Derek Robertson. Most of the stuff in here is drawn by Russ Braun. Uh, John McRae does help out, but you do have the return of Derek Robertson. He's the one that does the Butcher miniseries and comes home to wrap up the stories with issue 72. Again, mature content. So just be aware of what you're in for. Lots of sexual content, lots of graphic violence, and man, just the wrap up of this. I will, I'm gonna say something. I, I hate to warn people about this, but I assume, that, you know, when we talk about violence, it's mainly towards humans. But there are some things that happen in this particular volume that are a punch to the gut. If you're an animal lover, if you can't stand the sight of animals being hurt, fair warning, maybe stay away from this particular volume. Um, I love this cover right here. Very Dark Knight Returns, right? I mean, obviously, it's an homage to that. This book has 880 pages. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the stories found in here and then, of course, focus on this wonderful artwork. I think Ross Braun does an amazing job of kind of mimicking what Derek Robertson first started, but almost has that feel of, like, Steve Dillon to it. Uh, so uh, what I was saying about the animal cruelty, I always make sure to tell people that. Because some people can't stomach animals or children being hurt. Humans, sure, let's gut each other, chop off our heads, uh, dismember ourselves. Like it's, it's weird, right, with adults, with human adults. But for some reason, when it comes to children and animals, I have viewers that can't stomach those things. And I respect that. So that's why I give a fair warning. I know it's not for everybody when people are like, why the hell you even bother tell people about animals or kids being hurt? It's the boys. They should know what to expect. Yeah, well, some people can't stomach those things. So I get it. Uh, so this here serves as the wrap-up to this particular series. We've seen the boys coming together to take out the Seven. We've seen a confrontation with the Seven. 
but this right here serves as the finale uh we do see a flashback i love this scene by the way which is they've used in this season a lot um of homelander just talking to himself very much like Gollum, very much like william defoe and the green goblin i love the mirror motif that they use there um but here we have a flashback to the original boys the original team that was formed by colonel greg mallory and you see how colonel greg mallory and butcher meet especially in the miniseries the butcher miniseries uh you see that the confrontation here what happens to the original seven who makes it who doesn't and then why the original team of the boys ended up breaking up and there's a lot of loose ends that get tied up now i'm gonna say something that maybe some people disagree with or you know but this is just my personal opinion I've said before that this particular book ends the only way that it could have ended. Doesn't mean that I have to like it because I disagree with the Garth Ennis ending. And it's not because it's a horrible ending. It's just because I ended up caring about these characters in the end. So to me, it felt like, oh, why does it have to go that route instead of the route that I've pictured in my head? So really, it's a testimony to how well this was written. I ended up caring about the characters. I didn't want to see them go certain paths, and some of them did. And then when something happens, you know, it really hurts. Like It's like I got to know these people. Uh, but there's confrontation within the Seven. There's a lot of backstabbing, a lot of manipulation. So it's like the Seven are falling apart. Uh, the Butcher miniseries, let's talk about that. So right before the Butcher miniseries is when something horrible happens to the life of Butcher. And it kind of kicks off this flashback. So it talks about his youth, when he was in school. Um, and he, you know, he did find love. He found this girl named Becky. Uh, they had a marriage. I mean, they were together. And you can find out what happens here. Because if you know anything about the boys, they really don't have the happiest of endings or the happiest of lives that makes them join this particular team and man it's it's pretty rough to to, to read uh that particular story but that's where you see colonel greg mallory kind of lure him in and tell him about this whole espionage team and they start working together now this mini series the six issues is drawn by uh derek robertson so they start trying to take out the original seven and then we come back to present day, where uh, the team finally has it all out. There's a huge battle. Oh, man. And then, of course, the ending. And I'll leave it to, to you all to finish it, uh, to see what you end up thinking about it. I, if you think everybody's going to have a happy ending in this, you haven't been paying attention. Always reminds me of Game of Thrones. I think that was like their motto for a long time. But it's the truth when it comes to a story like this. You've seen them have a horrible life. You've seen the way they've been treated. But you expect them to have a happy ending still. Because you want some of them to survive. I will say some of the characters do have a happy ending. So, you know, you can come to expect that. Uh, but these are the last pages I wanted to show. This is towards the end. Well, no, you know what? I, I do want to show one final page uh, from the very last issue. Because mainly I just wanted to show off the Derek Robertson artwork uh, from his return in issue 72. Now, let's look at the extras here. Because holy crap, there are a lot of extras. And there's scripts in here. There are actual pages that are finished. I can't show all of them because some of them are definitely spoilers. Man, the relationship between Butcher and his father. I mean, this particular book in general really serves as like a deep dive into the psyche of what makes Butcher tick. Is he forgivable for all the things that he does? I guess that's left up to interpretation because... I mean, there are some things he does in here that I'm like, holy crap, man. I know you had a rough life, but damn. Here, let's, um, this is issue 71, so I can't show too much of that. Here's some script pages, so there's a lot of that. Uh, script of issue 71 and the final drawings. Here's the Ross Braun sketchbook. Just showcasing some of the art that's featured in this particular volume. Damn, there's a lot of spoilers in these sketches back here. And then the pinups back here. So here we have pinups from different artists. 
and an introduction from I think this is from one of the trade paperbacks by Garth Ennis. Yeah, this is for the definitive edition, the 2013, and the introduction from definitive edition volume six. Here's the bios on the creators, and then how else you can get the voice. And of course, there's the Dear Becky ad, but I believe this one is a st standard size hardcover. Ross Braun does join Garth Ennis. I haven't read it. Derek Robertson? Hmm, you got me there. And then bonus material folder. The binding is still that glued binding. However, the book, much like volumes one and two, lays over well towards the front and the back of the book. But that's it. That, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first-time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this omnibus hardcover. Let me know in the comments down below if you are picking them up in these omnibus hardcovers, or if you have the omnibus trade paperbacks, or if you have the definitive edition. And the important question, would you like to see Dear Becky collected in oversized hardcover format to match these omnis? Or if you want to wait around for Garth Ennis and Derek Robertson to reunite and tell more boys stories, and then get a companion omnibus. This was the Uncanny Omar. Leave your questions and comments down below. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications, and more importantly, all of you stay healthy and safe out there. Much love. <laughs>